Yeah, this is uh, DJ Mr. Mix, also known as Tretch DJ Mr. Mix. Um, one of the founding fathers of this thing that we call Miami Bass here in Miami. Um, definitely started out as a scratch DJ, learning from um, guys in New York. Um, when I was in the military, I was stationed overseas in London, England. And uh, guys from Rocksteady Crew, Africa Islam, different people like that used to come to London to do exhibitions and by me being in the military over there I was hearing about hip-hop and this and that this is we're talking like 1982 and uh, when I seen the guy Africa Islam you know scratching on turntables you know by me being a musician all through school you know from third grade all the way through high school um, I equated what he was that he was doing with the turntables like he was using them as a as an instrument it made me go on my next paycheck from the military to go get two um, BS turntables and a makeshift mixer and start practicing what it is that I seen him doing on stage and uh, you know I got really good at it because I, I equated it to someone like playing the guitar one finger set of fingers is doing one thing Another set of fingers is doing something else. So I equated that, you know, terminology to to the scratching and it took it took a while to get an understanding of how to really break the sound up, but I could kinda tell, you know, it was gonna be something that would always hold my interest for life. Um and as as time went on I got back stationed back into the States like in eighty four. There were other um groups in California where I got stationed at, um, Egyptian Lover, Uncle Jam's Army, um, Bam Bot and the Soul Sonic Force out of New York, you know, the Planet Rock Records, uh, the um, Looking for the Perfect Beat, Tommy Boy Records in general was a major influence of, um, of mine at the time I was, um, as also by, you know, doing the DJ and stuff, I was a pop locker and break dancer in my high school years, so, I equated all of that all into the same mix of it kind of influenced me what kind of records I would use to um, try to produce or emulate or imitate the sound that I was hearing from, you know, the, you know, these Planet Rock records and things like that. So, <clears throat> was Revelation and Beatbox your first record or did you do any records before that? Beatbox and Revelation were two records that I produced with some other guys that um, should remain nameless but at the same time they were my first ventures of going into the recording studio but a lot of times you know back in those days the only reference you had was Run DMC at the time and then you had um, Def Jam that was just coming out like in 84, 85 and they had the little Crush Groove movie with LL and all these other people so you were trying to emulate somewhat of the sound that they were coming with or what they were doing. So we tried to do our spin on the combination of using New York style scratching along with some of the up-tempo stuff that Egyptian Lover and there's a guy named Pretty Tony um, from out of Miami. He had a lot of big freestyle records when I hear music and um, um, some songs he did with Trenere and a couple other things, they were really big in California at the time. So I took the combination of using the influence from, you know, Egyptian Lover, Pretty Tony, and um, Africa Bambata to come up with the style of what I did on one of the records, Revelation, and the other record, Beatbox, was a slower version, more New York style record with scratching and all of that. So those are my two ventures of doing, you know, studio work. And it seemed like you know, as I think about my first session, I, I was like a seasoned professional going in to do something that I had never really done before, but I'm hearing all of these elements um, from these records. And um, when I actually made the purchase of an 808 drum machine, I made the purchase for like 300 bucks out of a pawn shop in California. But I knew about the machine way when I was in London. But the thing was, when I had seen the actual machine in London, and I'm tinkering around with the knobs and things like that, there's a knob, there's a kick drum knob on the 808 drum machine to where it'll either make a tight kick sound 
or it'll make the boom sound that everybody knows as the 808 boom sound now. But when the records, the Planet Rock record was made, Perfect Beat, all of these other records, that element wasn't used. And I always wondered why they would never turn the bass to where it would rumble and they just wanted to keep it tight. So that in itself, I kind of feel like, you know, I'm one of the few guys that um, took it from one thing to the next thing. Um, there was a couple of guys that were doing stuff with a lot of bass in it. You know, like I say, Egyptian Lover, you can hear eight, his, um, he's using the 808 drum, but he's not using the bass like how Miami bass ended up being. Same thing with Pretty Tony. Um, same thing with Africa Bambada and them. They weren't using it the same way. So I, you know, um, always wanted to use that element, you know, in records from before. So when I did my first two records, I made sure that element was in it. 